I know that many of you are getting ready for your Appalachian Trail through hikes or other long trail through hikes this year. So I just wanted to share six things that you should focus on during your hike to have a better hike. By the way, this is Claude, the St. Bernard. He, um, I'm dog sitting him. He's one of my, he's one of my regulars and he's the sweetest boy, but he always wants to be near me. And so I came out here cause I was like, oh, this would be a cute area to film my video with great lighting. But he wakes up from his very snorry slumber to come follow me and he wants to be on my lap. So Claude's just gonna be down here during the video. Hope you guys don't mind. Here's a better view of him. He's a real sweet boy. Claude, look over here. <laughs> he doesn't want to look over there, but he's a real sweet boy. Hey Claude, what do you think, buddy? You're real cute, but real disruptive. I might have to move in a minute, you guys. I think I'm gonna have to move. <laughs> okay, Claude went outside momentarily, so not gonna move quite yet. By the way, I'm like covered in fur. Okay, so number one, take care of your physical health. And this encompasses several things. <laughs> Take rest days when you need them. Try to get some nutritious foods in. Don't just live on crap because it will catch up to you and you will not feel very good because of it. Take a multivitamin, drink electrolytes. If you're sick, rest. You're gonna be a lot better off taking the rest, getting healed up and then getting back on the trail as opposed to trying to push yourself through sickness and not feeling well and all of that. Listen to your body. Figure out what it is trying to tell you. Don't just ignore the signs if there's something going wrong. For example, by the end of my AT through hike, my hair started falling off in huge chunks. And I was just like, mm, it, it's fine. It's probably just because I'm not brushing my hair very often. But I wasn't brushing my hair very often for the entire trail and it was not falling out in huge clumps. When I got to Maine, um, at the campground, I forget the name of it, but the campground right outside of before you go into Baxter State Park to go to Katahdin. I stayed at this campsite and they have showers there. So I paid for a shower and I took a shower. And I'm not kidding you, I had like a hairball this big coming out of that shower to throw away. And I was like, oh, it's fine. And I mean, it was fine because it was the end of the trail. I was about to finish, like I was able to finish, whatever. But come to find out, I'm pretty sure that my hair was falling out because I was really anemic which means my iron was really low. This is something that was zapping my energy levels. I was exhausted still for months after I finished my AT through hike until I figured out I was anemic. I got my, my blood tested. I actually kind of thought I had Lyme, but no, I was just really anemic. And this is something that I could have been correcting along the way, like taking iron pills. I mean, the reality is you're probably gonna be deficient in something while you're out there, just based on the foods that you're living on while backpacking. So I think just taking a multivitamin and listening to your body and trying to figure out what's wrong if things do seem a little off um, before they start snowballing and getting worse is gonna help you a lot in your journey. Also, you need rest in order for your muscles to heal. If you're working your muscles like crazy every day, like the only way that they're gonna heal is through rest. So make sure that you are getting adequate rest and not just pushing, pushing, pushing miles all of the time. Okay, Claude came back inside, so I did actually have to move. So you might see him in the background, hear him in the background, but don't worry about it. Number two is to take care of your mental health. It's cliche to say, but hike your own hike. And this means if something's not worth it working, change it. If you're hiking with people who have different ideas of what they wanna be doing each day than you, don't hike with them anymore. At least on the AT, it's extremely easy to meet people. The community there is incredibly strong and incredibly amazing. So don't just think like, oh, I have to keep up with these people who are pushing miles every day, even though I don't wanna push miles every day, just because you're not gonna meet anyone else and those are the only people you can hike with, because that's not the case. Or vice versa, if you wanna push miles, if you're feeling really strong and wanna do big miles, but the people that you're with want to chill out and have a great time, then don't stay with them. Like you, you got to take care of yourself. And for many people doing a long trail like the AT, this might be the only time in your life that you get to do one of these hikes. So make it worthwhile. Like it is not easy to get time off work. It's not easy to save the money for this. Like hike your own hike, you guys. Make it your own. Make sure you are focusing on what's important to you 
and don't make it about other people. Number three, create a budget to alleviate money stress and stick to that budget. I actually have a whole video that I just made a couple weeks ago on how to not overspend on your through hike. So check out that video if you want some specific tips on how to make your hike a little bit on the cheaper side. But one of the biggest reasons that people get off a long trail is because they run out of money. It's way more common than you would think. And I personally thought that I was gonna spend less money than I did while I was out there. I spent like a pretty typical amount, but I was like, why would I spend that much? That seems crazy. But no, I, I definitely did spend the typical amount of money, which for the AT specifically, it is about $1,000 per month that you're on trail. Might be a little higher with inflation at this point, but just, just plan for that. Most people are on the trail for five to seven months. So that's five to $7,000 just for on trail expenses, not even including any bills you might have back home. So just be prepared for that, save up enough money. And then if you are a person who doesn't have unlimited funds, which I don't have unlimited funds, so kudos to you if you do, but if you don't have unlimited funds, Make that budget, make sure you're sticking to it, whether it's weekly or monthly or whatever, just keep track and make sure you're not gonna run out of money. Number four, this one goes back to what I was talking with physical health, and that is that sleep is incredibly important. So make sure that you're doing whatever you need to do in order to get a good night's sleep every night. And as I mentioned, like your body can't heal if you're not resting and if you're not sleeping. And I think a lack of sleep is the quickest way <laughs> for your physical and mental health to suffer. So in order to get good sleep on the trail, number one, make sure that your sleep system works for you. All sleeping pads and sleeping bags are not made equally. If you are a cold sleeper like me, make sure your sleeping pad has a high R value and make sure that you get a sleeping bag that is high quality and goes down is rated to at least 20 degrees on the AT. I, I actually started with a zero degree sleeping bag and I still ended up having to buy like a sleeping bag liner for inside of it. Um, I now have a 20 degree bag, but it's a Western mountaineering, like really high quality sleeping bag. And I find that even though like sometimes I'll go to bed and I'll be cold in my sleeping bag at first, my body heat will fill up that sleeping bag and it'll really, the sleeping bag really traps the heat inside. Just a really high quality bag. So if you are a cold sleeper like me, keep those things in mind. If you're a warmer sleeper, you might not have to worry about it as much, but it's still really gonna be important that you get a sleeping pad and a sleeping bag that are gonna make you comfortable. So I have a couple of sleeping pads at this point. I have a Thermarest Neo Air X Lite. I find it horribly uncomfortable. It's really lightweight, which is great. So, you know, when I'm carrying it on my back, it's great that it's really lightweight, but I find it so uncomfortable. And not everyone's the same way. Some people love that sleeping pad. I then bought a Nemo Tensor sleeping pad, which by the way, I actually have to replace it because it got a hole in my Colorado trail through hike. And that sleeping pad, I just find to be so incredibly comfortable that it's a little bit heavier. It's less durable. Like my Neo Air X Lite, I've had it for longer. It has not sprung a leak. My Nemo Tensor, I just got last spring and it sprung a leak over the summer. So that's frustrating, not ideal for a long trail, but my sleep is just so freaking incredible with that pad that I am going to replace it and get that one again. Because I mean, to me, there's just no replacement for amazing trail sleep. Another thing is if you're gonna be sleeping in shelters, there tend to be a lot of snorers that love to sleep in shelters. Why that is, I don't know. I think if you're a snorer, you should maybe not sleep in the shelters, but that's not the reality because people do sleep in them and they snore. So if you're a light sleeper and you're gonna sleep in the shelters, I would definitely recommend bringing along some earplugs. And these also really come in handy for when you're staying in hostels or even sharing hotel rooms with your family. Um, I never used earplugs ever in my life. I never would have even thought to get them for any reason, but I ended up picking up a pair while I was on the AT and they made just a tremendous difference when I was staying in hostels and things like that. I'm not a big shelter person. I only spent the night in two shelters on the entire AT, but I can tell you that the, the earplugs did help in the shelters as well. Something else you might wanna try if you're not sleeping well on trail is 
maybe getting some sleep aids like melatonin gummies or things like that. Like I'm not a doctor. I'm not, you know, I can't tell you what supplements to get, but I know that among my friends who don't sleep well, melatonin is a very popular supplement to help you sleep. I believe it's all natural. Um, again, I'm not an expert, but that might be something to consider as well. And while you should obviously always stay hydrated, if you're waking up in the night to pee every night, maybe just don't drink so much before bed. I love on cold nights having an herbal tea while I'm out backpacking, but I often will not do it because I know if I will, I'm going to have to get up in the night and that's going to disrupt my sleep. So you got to weigh those types of things. And one last thing about sleep that I'll say is that for me personally, when I, my first couple of nights of a backpacking trip, I'm always way more alert to every tiny noise outside, every teeny tiny crackle. I'm like, oh, house phone. Sorry, these guys live in the mountains, so they still have a house phone because the service is so bad up here. But anyway, so my first couple of nights, every little crackle outside, I'm like, oh, it's a bear, it's a mountain lion, it's a whatever. And it it's not, it never is. I mean, very occasionally maybe, but and every little teeny tiny rodent also sounds like a giant creature out there but once i have been out in the woods for a few nights i stop hearing all of that stuff and i think that's very common so if you go out there your first couple nights and you're like i can't handle this i can't sleep like it's too scary outside whatever whatever your your mind and your body are going to get used to it so don't be too frustrated by that just know that it might take a little time to adjust. Number five, don't just focus on crushing miles all of the time. Stop to smell the roses. Stop to soak in the beauty around you. I mean, after all, isn't that why, why you're out there in the first place? I feel like within through hiking culture, this is like a big thing. People just love to talk about crushing miles constantly. And like, oh, I did a 25 out of here, blah, blah, blah. Or I did a 35 mile day, blah, blah, blah. But like, oftentimes you will see those people that are doing big miles. Like you'll think, oh, they're doing these big miles. I'm never going to see them again, right? No, you see them like three days later and they've been in town for three days because they pulled a muscle or exhausted themselves so thoroughly that they have to take like three or four days to recover. So just don't get caught up in the anxiety of, you know, being competitive over miles or just getting stressed out because it seems like everyone around you is doing these huge miles and you're not doing these huge miles. Like, first of all, to avoid injury, you should start slowly, you know, maybe start with 10 mile days, 12 mile days, and then work your way up. Second of all, you should make the time in your schedule. Like if you get to an incredible campsite, at 2 p.m., you were gonna try to do five or 10 more miles that day. Maybe do the five or 10 miles some other time and stay at the incredible campsite because when are you ever gonna be back at this incredible campsite? <laughs> or the same thing with like, oh, you get the opportunity to go spend a half day swimming at a lake or, or you know, someone offers to lend you their paddleboard or their canoe, or you get to a town and you're just like, really vibing with that town. You're just really feeling it. Or there's some other side quests that you, you want to take part in. Like make the time to do those things because a through hike is not just about hiking. It's also about the community and the side adventures and just the general experience. So don't just be focused on crushing miles, crushing miles, crushing miles. Like there are other, like look around you. There are other things to focus on and, and experience. So yeah. And number six, sort of in line with that, treat yourself. You're going to be out in the woods and you're going to be so hungry and you're going to be dreaming about the things that you can eat when you get into town and the things that you can do when you get into town. And I, th I think deprivation is um, a really healthy, <laughs> really healthy way to really appreciate all the modern conveniences whether this is food or showers or otherwise. So even though, like I mentioned earlier in this video, you should be sticking to a budget and all that good stuff, but you should be making room in your budget to treat yourself to the things that you want when you get to town. Like you've been out in the backcountry for a week 
carrying all your stuff on your back, you're gonna get to town, you're gonna be so dirty and sweaty and tired and hungry, and you will have been dreaming all week about burgers or pizza or pancakes or ice cream or whatever it is. You should be able to treat yourself to those things. Within reason, of course, maybe you don't need all of those things within one town, but make sure you are leaving room in your budget to treat yourself to those things because you have freaking earned it and you should be able to enjoy those things. That's also, I think in my opinion, I think that's also a big part of a through hike is depriving yourself and then getting to enjoy those things. I, it's really good for your dopamine levels or something. Like it's just, it's joyous, it's just so joyous. So make sure you're not depriving yourself too much. So yeah, those are six things that you should focus on while you're on your through hike this year in order to have a better experience. If you are gonna be doing a through hike this year, I would love to hear about it in the comments. Let me know. If you have through hiked a long trail before, let me know what I missed. What else should people be thinking about and focusing on while they're on their through hike? And by the way, I'm hoping to hike the John Muir Trail in California this summer. So if you're interested in that trail, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Fingers crossed, because that one is not the easiest logistically and permit wise, but thanks for being here. I'll talk to you later.